Alright, I'm Detective Inspector Tom McLeish, and this month I've been investigating your fucking Nino Cooney. And to be honest with you, I could just sit here and go, aye, it's the bee's tits and leave it at that, cause, well, everything else is waffle. This thing is so close to triple distilled perfection, it's almost hard to believe it's an actual thing, you know? Like I've been spirited away to some alternate universe where Japanese RPGs aren't they, like, really fucking impenetrable, and you don't have to work hard to get into them. I should probably clarify that, right? I'm not the sort of prick who'd dismiss the entire nation of Japan's RPG output or anything like that. It's just that JRPGs, I tend to find them really hard to get invested in, you know? Really hard to get to a point where you're so comfortable playing the game that you're just sort of accepting what happens and, and getting into the story and stuff. I usually find there's a lot of barriers. <laughs> For sake, boys, get a rest, I'm trying to get something done up here. But Nino Cooney, without doing anything drastic like ignoring its roots or being too dumbed down to satisfy any cunt, has managed the impossible. It's made someone like me, someone who would tend to avoid the very thing it is, completely and utterly fall in love with it. And I'm not entirely sure why, I mean, it could be Studio Ghibli's gorgeous art style. It could be Level 5's really impressively fluid battle system. But it could be this wee Welsh guy. That's for me to know and you to find out. Look lively. Drippy, Lord High Lord of the Fairies, one of the greatest video game characters ever conceived. Actually, fuck that, one of the greatest characters ever conceived, full stop. He enters the fray when the main protagonist, a wee boy called Oliver, suffers a terrible tragedy and greets onto his favourite stuffed toy, which via fantasy logic breaks an old curse and allows Drippy to spring to life and become a treasured companion to both Oliver and the player. Curse lifted, is it? Tiny! It's fucking brilliant. My critical faculties aren't even working with this thing. I'm just stunned. Absolutely stunned. My brain just can't process this amount of joy, you know. Maybe I need a wee companion to help us out. See, I'm a herd cunt, so I can't cry, but maybe. <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> oh, fucking hell. Are you alive? Of course I'm alive, you fat jock twat. It's just... I didn't expect... Didn't expect what? Didn't expect me to react to some wanker taking a piddle on my fucking head. I know you're a copper, but you can't just go around pissing on people with impunity, man. Bloody soaking, I am. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry, he says. Here I am, covered in the 95% proof urine of an overweight, half-naked copper, and you are bloody sorry. Right. How can I make it up to you? Well, you can give me some fucking Jaffa cakes, that'll be a start. Fucking what? Thanks Tom, these are bloody lovely, these are. So anyway, like any JRPG, Nino Kuni is a game of many interconnected parts. At its core is an adventure of combat and exploration, but integral to that is the familiar system, which is essentially an entirely fleshed out game of Pokemon built in. I mean, is that no fucking magic? Have you not played a Pokemon game in your DS and thought, Christ, this is cracking, I wouldn't mind the big console version of this. Well, fucking here it is, wire in, brilliant. So as you go around setting the boot cunts and gathering XP, your familiars level up with you. Plus you can give them treats to boost their stats. Like chocolate bars and heroin and all that. It's a really addictive mechanic and a big network of addictive mechanics. It's no wonder I've found myself sinking 10 hours at a time into this thing without even noticing. Oh, Tam! Fucking wet! You got any more Jaffa cakes? Oh, wet, you've not finished them, have you? Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get the Jaffa cakes? Jaffa cakes, are you right, fuck shake? The world it's all setting is absolutely huge. You start off in the real world, where there's a pretty healthy size of tune to cut a boot in, and then you get to the magical fantasy place that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look, I've got a wee boat and everything. The game gets drip fed to you and all, it's really expertly paced, never overwhelming you, gives you a chance to get to grips with everything it teaches you before it gives you mere. I was wondering if you might lend us a bit of a hand like. If you're 20, 30 hours in you'll still be learning new things about how you play it, as well as seeing new places to explore. It's just an amazing amount of beautifully animated fun. But don't think the cutesy art style means it's going to be a piece of piss, there's some pretty fucking tough fights in this thing. Huh? 
The game's that well put together that you don't often find yourself fucking grinding or that, but what you will have to do is invest some time and thought into how to use your team. This isn't a game for dafties, like, it's fucking full on. Oh, Sam, fucking what is it? You got any mini eggs? Mini eggs? Milk chocolate eggs with a crispy candy coat in them, eh? Fine, aye, whatever. Tidy. If I could only be this game's brilliant, it's charming and deftly constructed, and, well, if you've got a PS3 and you're no bother about Nino Cooney, then you're being a wanker, so get it dealt with. Right, where the fuck's that wee prick up to? Oh, for fuck's sake, he's doing stand-up. Oggy, oggy, oggy! Oi, oi, oi!